episode 7 and about how you, how you can escape Vista. Who gave people Vista? Yeah, it's... Um... Sorry, Roy. I just want to go back into a certain point we missed before. Uh, now, everyone's talking about Windows as the normal thing. Everybody, everybody uh, is running on, you know, the desktop. That's the main thing people work on, but more and more people actually work on the phone. As far as I know, uh, Tim and Gordon both have Linux-based phones now. Is, is this true in both cases? or? Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. and lots of people work on the train. They, you know, they tweet, they do documents, they play games, you know, reach games, 3D, and all that sort of stuff. And people don't think, what is this? You know, what's running these phones? And in some cases, it's the the iPhone. But what we found recently, it's not just phones that run lots of Android now. Well, Android is obviously uh, selling far more than all the other uh, Linux-based platforms like Palm's, uh, you know, pre-OS and. Uh, WebOS, uh, which runs on the pre, and and, uh, and one of the things you found you find now is that Android is growing up and it's moving from phones now to tablets, and from tablets, you know what's next? They'll move to uh, laptops pretty soon. So I, uh, I in the show notes we probably will have some pointers and some headlines uh, to talk about how uh, Google has just signed several deals, uh, very very nice things like tablets that cost one hundred and eighty dollars. US dollars, uh, running Android and doing all the nice things, you know, touchscreen and the whole lot. Uh, and Microsoft cannot compete there because they have no operating system for these things that's going to work and operate on hardware of this level or of this type, at this price. So uh, that's that's really interesting. The other thing, I, I'm going to probably have something to say. What, what, yeah, you, you go first uh, before I go. I was just going to make a, a very quick comment, and it was just in regards to Android. And I mean, I love my uh, my Android phone to bits, and I can be very productive on it. In fact, when I was away uh, for a short holiday this year, I did a blog post um, on Android, and it, it was a bit hard going because I, I don't get on with these touch keyboards um, that the H, uh, the touch screen keyboard that the HTC um, has. But I mean, I was I was productive with it, and like Roy says, I can tweet and I can take photos and upload them to Twitter and everything like that. But for me, and maybe it's a sign of my age or, or whatever, but for me, nothing will ever replace a desktop. Um, these tablets are great and they look fantastic, and it's a very good concept. But for me, I'm certainly not travelling enough to to warrant taking one of these things away with me. And uh, I'm still quite old-fashioned and prefer the sitting at a desk with a keyboard in front of you and a mouse to your right-hand side and no touch screens. Um, I don't know, Gordon, if you have a, a similar opinion to me well, or whether you're taking up this mobile technology. And... Well, to, um, I've got my netbook, and that's that's really my second computer. Um, but, no, I mean, my Android phone, um, I do like it, but it's it's more, I don't use it all that much, to be honest. Uh, I'm not really that much of, of one for sitting on the train and playing about with the phone. Um, it's my alarm clock. Uh, at some point, it's going to be my MP3 player just to avoid carrying two devices, um, and it can make calls and send text messages and whatever. But beyond that, it's really just a nice interface to work with, um, and I do have like mustard set up to to, to dent from it, um, so they're just something to pass the time um, on the train. But really, not much beyond that. It can do an awful lot more than I actually use it for. Um, but yeah, and that. I mean, I'm okay with the the typing on the on the keyboard as long as it's um, la- landscape horizontal. Yeah, long ways. Um, that way, I've got bigger um, space for each key. But yeah, I mean, that's I don't use it really. It, it is a second computer. It is really a little computer, but I don't really use it as much for that. So. I want to say, uh, did you have anything to say first? I so I'm sorry if I uh, interrupt. I. I was going to say, uh, we have some nice figures about sales of Android. We hear about how many uh, Google activates. They claim to be activating now, probably approaching like a third of a, a third of a million per day now. But uh, LG is giving some numbers about cheap phones it sold. It claims to have sold a million in 40 days. Uh, the issue with LG and now Samsung, which comes to Europe increasingly in December with the, uh, with the Galaxy S, uh, is that they pay Microsoft for each sale they make of uh, an Android-based device. Uh, so I basically encourage people not to buy from these two companies, from LG and uh, Samsung, Korean companies. Uh, but one of the, the things that also happened, that's also major news, is uh, 
Eric Schmidt was talking about uh, Chrome OS, and Chrome OS has always been kind of a weird uh, thing because it's based on Linux as well, and people say, what's the difference between Chrome OS and Android? Why don't you merge them, as they sometimes say. And now, Schmidt is trying to clarify, and he says, well, Chrome OS is for devices with keyboards, and Android is going to be reserved for touchscreen based uh, devices, so phones and tablets and things like that. And uh, it also says that it's going to be out sometime next year, so we won't see any Chrome OS uh, tablet, uh, Chrome OS, well, I suppose some notebooks or tablets this year. It probably will be as expected on the first half of 2011. Right. Well, um, we'll move on to another uh, topic. If you don't mind, I've just got a couple of a couple more quickies to throw in. Just um, sure. you got um, if, if everybody's happy with that. Cause you've got you got. Um, keep in mind that uh, my busy uh, daily schedule at work doesn't give me a lot of time to find these little gems, but when I do, I like to, to mention them. Um, the first one is for anybody considering learning Python, if they've got children that want to learn Python or fancy learning it themselves, I found a fantastic ebook um, that's free, uh, released under the uh, Creative Commons. Um, it's uh, called Invent with Python. And um, I'll be putting the link in my show notes. Now, probably a lot of people have heard about this uh, title already, but it's the first time I've seen it, and I was very impressed by the way that it, it assumes absolutely no coding knowledge whatsoever, and uh, it's set out in a way that even a 12-year-old uh, can understand it. That's one to the, to the blurb on the, on the introduction. I mean, it's a really cracking book. Um, so I'll be putting the link in my show notes, and I hope that people take a look at it if they're thinking about getting into Python, because I've uh, skimmed over a couple of chapters, and it, it's very well written. So that was my first little gem of the day. Um, the next one is um, Chrome hey, BSU. I, oh, sorry. I, uh, just interrupt. Uh, we have quite a few releases to do with development, and I just thought while you're on the subject, I probably should mention uh, a few more things. Let me just bring them up on my screen first. Right, so Parrot 2.10.0 uh, 2 was released. Now Parrot, what it's doing, it's not receiving as much press as it ought to, but it's uh, it's it's a very important uh, virtual machine uh, which is going to be used by programmers, and it, it isn't known to many people, so I'm not sure how many people use that. Uh, but also, what we have is MariaDB uh, 5.2, that's a database, that's the uh, that's Monty, Monty trying to kind of regain control of MySQL, taking it out of Oracle. I'm not sure if you say MySQL. I, I understand originally it was called MySQL, and people just call it MySQL now. But he's he's trying to uh, have he's, he's got this this thing called like SkyDB or Sky something, where he, which is the parent company of the which provides support for a database that he's trying to ensure is outside the complete control of Oracle. Now that they have that, now that they increase the prices of of, of the of the databases, uh, so these are the two uh, development uh, related uh, things I wanted to just drop in. And you had something about Chromium BSU, so sorry. Yeah. Um, no, that was a nice nice to put it in there because actually Chromium BSU is completely different from anything serious. So um, Chromium BSU, despite the name, has got nothing to do with the web browser. Um, anybody who's had an Amiga computer. Um, and remembers Xenon 2 Mega Blast. Um, we'll absolutely love this little game. It's a very quick download. Um, and the link again will be on the show notes. I discovered it um, in my lunch hour at work and had a chance to have a play on with it on the desktop. It's absolutely fantastic. It's a great little sh shoot 'em up. Um, that link's going to be on the website and possibly even a couple of screenshots and uh, and a bit of a review because it's a, a cracking little title. So that was my two little gems of the day. Um, Roy, over to you, if you've got anything else you want yeah, to... Yeah, uh, since I uh, mentioned Oracle, so I think I probably should say something about LibreOffice. I don't think we said anything about the project just yet, because we concentrate more on the Linux side, and, and LibreOffice is a uh, cross-platform uh, replacement for OpenOffice, and it's more of a fork. Now it's become at least more of a fork, and they, uh, Bruce Byfield wrote a piece that's... Uh, let me just see the title I gave that. It's a... Uh, yeah, he basically he talks about how it kind of breaks free and how we, they try to rethink the office suite. Uh, and he has an interesting... I, I usually don't agree with this guy, but this time he has a very nice uh, interview with the developers. And he he, 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 tells a bit, he he talks about how the developers view the 
need for concentration on contact and on on the on the content, not the appearance of the document so much. Uh, I think I hopefully they'll move into more of the LaTeX paradigm because I never use Office Suite; I always go to LaTeX when. I